Hi, everybody. Good afternoon um, or good morning for those of you on the on the West Coast. Uh, thanks for attending the web the webinar today. An introduction to System Center Config Manager uh, 2012 R2. Um, presented by me, I'm Chris Day. I am the uh, Solutions Director for B and D. Um, I've also got one of my engineers, Chris Turner, on the line, who will be helping answer some questions at the end. Uh, I'm going to give everybody just another couple seconds because people are still uh, leaking in, and then we will get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually post a uh, a vote up here um, to see what kind of system management everybody's currently running. And we'll, we can talk about that, we can ask questions at the end. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just get that, get, out, get that out of the way first. That's the only one I'm gonna ask today. So, I, System Center 20, uh, 2012 R2, um, especially on the Config Manager side, this is this is really just a small piece of what what System Center overall can um, uh, brings to the table. So, the System Center Config Manager is a uh, is the systems management portion. Um, it's going to what's going to help you do your imaging, device management, compliance, uh, manage your software updates. It's going to manage the content for for everything. It's going to provide endpoint protection. Um, that's really what SCCM does. Now there's lots of other parts of System Center that we'll probably have other webinars on, things like System Center Operation Manager, which takes care of all your monitoring, um, System Center uh, Service Manager, uh, there's also System Center Orchestrator, um, and Virtual Machine Manager, and a couple other small smaller parts of the, uh, and I'm sorry, sir, uh, so today we're going to mostly focus on on SCCM. Uh, for for the, those of you guys who aren't familiar with it, uh, you know this is this has been a product that's been around Microsoft for a really long time. Um, I believe a little over 15 years now. It started out with SMS 1.0. For those of you who are familiar with the with the SMS products, um, you know you thought about packaging software you know, sending them out to different desktops, kind of helping that enterprise level uh, software deployment is really what what SMS brought us. And then it kind of went to System Center in 2007, which gave us a lot more functionality around how to deploy software, how to, you know, manage your assets, how to do all that kind of stuff. So now that we're at the iteration of the 2012 R2, we have a much more robust product. It gives us the ability to do endpoint protection, which we'll talk about a little later, um, the compliance and management settings, which we'll also talk about a little later, the ability to do software updates. Um, that's That's been a part of System Center for a while. It's gotten more robust. Um, you know, you can not only update your Windows servers uh, that utilizes the traditional uh, WSUS server, but it also you can also update your, your third-party products. So, you know, things like Java, um, Adobe, those those kind of products that are constantly bugging your users to update. Um, System Center Configuration Manager brings you the ability to update those those third party products. Um, it allows you also in R2 to bring to put some of your distribution points in Azure, um, which which can really help reduce your footprint on premise. So we're going to jump to the next slide and just talk quickly about about SCCM and also Windows Intune. So for those of you who don't know, Windows Intune is the Microsoft's it's a cloud version of SCCM to a certain extent. Um, it helps you, do, you it helps you maintain your mobile devices. It can also do your desktops. It's fully cloud-based, so you could run that completely by itself. But the nice thing about it is it will also integrate with the SCCM platform, um, which allows you to manage your BYOD-type devices out in the field um, and with, your, with your system center console. So you get that single pane of glass view uh, within SCCM to control your Windows into um, 
also. I mean, there's 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 some great things that it provides to all the users. You know, it full PC OS management, endpoint protection again. Uh, System Center also provides a rich reporting platform, and we can talk about that a little more in a little while. Uh, you know, the whole policy re, uh, controls. You can manage up to 100,000 devices. These, you know, it's not just for five or ten devices. It's you know, you can really get out there. And, um, reach out to all the devices in the enterprise. Uh, the extensible administration tools, that's important because you can use PowerShell uh, to do most of this stuff. You know, and it integrates with the other system center products. You can, you can, you can almost fully automate your entire IT world using the system center, um, system center suite of products. So what platforms does, does SCCM support and how does it do it? So the main way when you deploy System Center Config Manager to find uh, to uh, into, your, into your environment is by doing a discovery over your network. Once that discovery is done, it basically can do a ping sweep. There's a couple other things to not get too far into the weeds that you can do uh, to go out and discover your network. Once discovered, you can have uh, Config Manager Deploy agents, everything that it finds. Um, here's a list of, of the, the supported OSs um, and platforms that, that it does support and how it supports them. So anywhere you see the config, manage, config, config manager agent or management agent, that's, that's going to give you that very robust um, experience around uh, your, your, your PCs and servers being managed. Um, you can also manage mobile devices with, uh, with System Center. It, it gives you the ability to um, do remote wipes, um, lock down the information with R2. You have more, more control over doing SSL VPNs for certain apps. It lets you have your own app store for the mobile devices. Um, it lets you control certain parts of the mobile device. So I only want to wipe the data that's corporate data. It does give you that ability. It gives you the ability to to also um, inventory the devices to let you know what's on your network, what people are using. So so there is quite a bit of platform support um, for SCCM. Deploying OSs is, is also a big uh, big part of Config Manager. Um, I know a lot of us struggle every day with how do we, how do we deploy our, our images um, to all our computers enterprise-wide. Uh, you know, are people still using the old ghost? Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways to go about this. With System Center 2012, it really can give you a zero-touch deployment. Um, you can literally plug a device into a network and have it boot off the network and install all of its uh, all of its features from just plugging it in and starting it up. Um, it's very very intelligent. It can you can do things like slipstream your updates into the images. So there's no need to build multiple images. You can have one base image. It can also slip the drivers in through a task sequence at the time of deployment. So if you're if you're let's say you have a bunch of laptops, you have ten different brands and types. Um, you just have to be able to have the drivers for those 10 different brands. Um, SCCM will recognize that it's a certain type of computer or laptop and inject the right drivers into the image on, on, uh, on deployment. So if you're, when you're doing your OSDs, uh, your operating system deployments, um, it does give you the ability to only have one base image that can go across uh, multiple different types of systems. It can also provision things, provision the applications the same way to where people in certain groups may only get a certain amount, certain applications. So you don't have to build multiple images for, for each group of uh, people out there. That can help a lot, especially sp saving space. Um, you know, you might, not, you might not want to have 500 images on 50 different distribution points. So it gives you a little more flexibility to do that. Uh, it also has features where you can put different, um, where you could have your 
distribution points where the software is stored at different sites, but if you have a very small site with only a couple computers, you can use Windows branch cache to utilize the, the hard drives on those local machines to cache the images there. So it, there's, there's lots of flexibility. Um, it does use bits, so it gives you the it gives you that uh, experience where you're not it's not sucking up all the bandwidth from your um, from your machine. Now there's a couple of ways to do it. As as you can see here, um, the new computer, which is a fresh install, uh, you can you know use that for newer repurposed hardware. Um, the the Pixie Boot scenario, which I talked about, where you can have your computer boot to the network and automatically um, download the image. Um, you can do a the side by sides uh, also offline with removable media. So you could have a deployment on a USB drive that you can you can use. Um, opt, you can also do pre staged media. So you could pre stage all the media at let, let's say a different um, branch office like we discussed with the branch caching. So it gives us a lot of flexibility on how we want to do our uh, deployments and and saves you. The, the hassle of having to ship your, let's say, ship your laptops back to a corporate headquarters to be re-imaged. Right. So another great feature of, of SCCM is the ability to do asset intelligence uh, and inventory along with software, software metering. So when, once, the, once you deploy the uh, SCCM agent, the Config Manager agent, on the machines, it'll report back a full hardware inventory. So you'll get all the information about that piece of hardware um, down to the processor types, RAM. Uh, you'll you'll see basically how old it is, uh, what software is installed, whether you know there's software that's kind of maybe you've got soft they've got software on that that you're not allowing them to have. You know you can see all that. You can also um, use SCCM to let's say. Uh, you people had software that you didn't want to you didn't want on there. You could actually have it automatically remove it by policy because it knows this is the only set of software that's supposed to be on there. Um, it lets you understand the user profiles that are on there. Um, you can identify your licensing issues, and this is where we get into software metering. So even with your third party products, so let's say you've got Photoshop, which is, which is a very expensive product to have. Um, and you've only got, let's say, you've got a thousand people, but a hundred licenses. You can keep up with software metering to find out how many licenses you have available, and whether you want to deploy that or not. So, um, it really gives you that that really granular look into into what your licensing looks like. Um, along with along with the. Uh, Asset intelligence. It, it does collect your hardware inventory, as I said before. Um, that allows you to know what uh, what kind of hardware you do have out there. Maybe you just purchased a company, and you want to see, you know, hey, what do we got out there? What types of laptops? Maybe everything's different, so we need to get that list down. You can report against that. It does use SQL reporting services. Um, which gives, uh, you know, you could really write some some uh, granular reports around uh, how you want to slice and dice your data. Uh, SCCM also gives us the ability to deploy, deploy applications. In the old days, you used to make a package and ship that package out for a certain type of computer. So let's say you had x86 computers. Um, oh. Chris just also reminded me of something. You can also find out what systems are ready for Windows 8 with the asset intelligence. So if you're looking to do a Windows 8 upgrade, uh, you can you can easily uh, find out which machines are ready for Windows 8 or which machines you're going to have to replace. So that provides a pretty good service there um, when you go to find this out. So also back to application management. So in the old days, like I said, you had to create a package. You had to package that up for different let's say different operating systems, um, different uh, different processor types of so x86 over x32, um, create a bunch of them and have them, have them go out and do stuff. Nowadays, you have a lot more flexibility. You can create one package, 
and you can assign different executables to different uh, different operating system types. It, it's smart enough to know with, through the single uh, application that it can that it can find the different computer types, be able to deploy to the right places, um, also deploy to the right groups. So you can also deploy software to your enterprise based on uh, group membership. You can do it based on subnet. Anything that you could really query against um, that SCCM picks up, you can actually deploy uh, software that way. You've also got the ability to have a software, basically a software library, where your users can go pick out the software they want. Um, and let's say it's something that requires a, a special license that not everybody gets. You can also have it create a workflow to, um, to send to the manager for approval to make sure it's okay that somebody has a copy of, let's say, Photoshop. All right, endpoint security, compliance, and endpoint protection. These are these are some pretty uh, important parts of of SCCM as a whole. Uh, what they've done is uh, taken um, your antivirus and anti malware and integrated it into the into the Config Manager agent. Now. What it also does is allows it to leverage the parts that are already built into Windows. So let's say there's something a group policy does. It's not the, the application's not bloated because it can reach out to group policy to activate. Um, let's say you don't allow USB keys to be put into your, um, into your environment. Instead of having that, that feature packaged into the, the antivirus, anti-malware in that agent and kind of bloat that software, it gives us the ability to uh, reach out to group policy and set that, that policy within group policy. Um, think of it also for a Windows firewall. If you're blocking certain things, it'll actually reach out to Windows firewall instead of being a bloated product that um, has uh, the firewall built into it. So it's, it's important to realize that SCCM, when you purchase SCCM, it does come when you, when you, get the, when you license the desktops, it does come with your endpoint protection. So it's it's got the antivirus, it's got the anti-malware. Um, it will it'll install over uh, if you have a previous product. It'll actually uninstall the previous product to put its new uh, to put the endpoint protection into place. But you can still use your traditional endpoint protection if that's something you want to use. Um, it also gives you a very consolidated reporting mechanism. Again, with SSRS, that allows you to uh, kind of dice that data uh, however you want to. If you're maybe you're running some BI against it to find out how many people are compliant, um, find out where the updates are. Uh, speaking of updates, that's that's another great feature of SCCM is the ability to manage your to very granularly manage your updates and um, just like with WSUS, have that same kind of look and feel, but a lot more a lot more powerful on the back end. You know which machines are currently up to compliance, um, not only with, with their updates, but also with their, uh, with their firewalls, uh, with the antivirus. You can, you can deploy your third party, your third party application updates to, like I said earlier, uh, Adobe and Java. Um, it really is a great tool when it comes to, comes to being compliant uh, on, on your network. Also, with R2, it's important to remember that uh, you can set VPN uh, access with it. So you can do SSL VPN if you have mobile devices that are out in the field. You can, you can have, let's say, you deploy an application to that mobile device. You can actually, on a per application basis, have it create a SSL VPN back into your network to run that certain device that certain application. So the phone doesn't always have to be, it's only securing that single application. So that can be a, a great um, a great benefit when you're when you're using uh, mobile devices and you're trying to protect those endpoints. And just a little more info on the uh, on the software update and compliance. Uh, one thing that makes it pretty handy is is the ability to um, Either when you when you're updating your machines, you can up, have it either 
update from the updates on the distribution point, or in our world where there's a lot of BYOD, people take their devices all, the, all over the place, maybe you're not always on the network. Once the, device, once the updates are authorized, it will actually let the computers go directly to Windows Update and download the authorized updates through Windows Update. Um, so you don't necessarily have to use uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the internet, being able to, or on the, on, I'm sorry, on your internal network, being able to connect to a distribution point. Um, it could just go as long as they're approved, and it knows they're approved. It'll just go directly out to Windows Update and get those updates if the if the distribution point um, is is not, it can't see it at that point in time. Uh, you can you can have it auto deploy. Um, you can have a CCM tell it to. Avoid doing a reboot, for instance, during workouts. Um, the uh, it it will it will let you decide which, or it will decide which updates, for instance, are superseded. So, you know, if if it'll know that maybe if Service Pack One comes out, that supersedes the rest of the updates, and it doesn't need those. So it'll only apply that one update to the to the machine um, that it needs. So it'll update both both your desktops, laptops, but it'll also do ser your server infrastructure. So keep that in mind. Um, it'll automatically deploy to the target collections. Uh, it, it really does have a very strong, um, not only deployment uh, method, but it, it can uh, really report on what, what's going on. So if you had a deployment or a software update fail, you'll know pretty quickly which ones failed and kind of what you need to do to remediate those those issues. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about here because I really want to give us plenty of time for questions. Um, I realize this is a very short overview of System Center. Um, you know, we've only got about 30, 35 minutes <laughs> to go through these webinars, um, so I'm expecting lots of good questions at the end. Uh, so they did have simplified administration. I realize that in the past, uh, it, um, Administration has been very clunky in the system center world. Uh, Microsoft realized that. Uh, they've really made a, man, uh, a modern management console. Um, they've gone to a role-based administration. So we have lots of questions built around, um, you know, what, how can we, I've got a desktop team and I've got a server team, but I don't want the desktop team to be able to deploy updates to the server team and vice versa. So with role-based administration, it gives us that ability. So you can get very granular. I only want this person to have, to be able to update these computers in a very specific subnet. Um, it, it allows that to happen. Or I only want these people to be able to deploy OSs, and I only want these people to be able to deploy applications. Uh, you, you've, you've really got a lot of flexibility around how you want uh, to set up the security within your uh, SCCM environment. Uh, you know, it, especially around getting stuff like asset intelligence too. So that's really all I've got as far as as System Center, just the quick and dirty brief overview. Um, please, I'm going to open it up for questions. Uh, please ask questions. Chris and I would love to answer them. Um, again, you know, this is a the quick and Quick and dirty version of SCCN. There's a lot more, uh, a lot more features. We just hit the, we just hit the high points. Um, so, so please ask questions. I'm going to leave it open for about the next 10 minutes for them. Okay. Hi. This is uh, this is Chris. By the way, um, I'm just here to help Chris stay answer some of your questions here. It looks like we've got one. Um, has forced reboots been incorporated in System Center update deployments even when a machine does not require one? This is important when we are talking about servers that I need to reboot month, once a month. Let me see what we got here. Has forced reboots been incorporated in system update deployments even when a machine does not require one? This is important when we are talking about servers that need to reboot once a month. Good question. Um, um, unless the uh, actual software update is... It okay. Basically, you could make servers reboot once a month with the updates, whether they need the whether they need the reboot or not, via the updates. You know, I'd say uh, I know you can. Uh, that's a good question, actually, because 
Um, I don't think there's an, uh, as far as I know, uh, there's within within the deployment, there's not a. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I couldn't. Basically, they couldn't hear the question. Okay, can you repeat the question, Chris? Sure. Uh, so the question is: Has a forced reboot been incorporated in software update deployments, even when a machine does not require, require one? This is important when we are talking about servers that need a reboot once a month. So I believe what, what the person is asking is, um, if if the let's say we do software updates. Uh, and the software updates don't require the machine to reboot. Can you force a reboot on the servers? Um, and I'm going to say no. Oh, I would say no. No. I mean, you could, you could, you could. There's the opposite. So you could, you could um, uh, suppress the reboot. Um, but as far as I know, and as far as the experience I've had with software updates and, and deployment packages, are deploying a, depo a software update. Um, there is no, there's no mechanism to force a reboot. You, you can write a script, and you can, you can send that script out, but um, that's a little more tricky. I mean, not trickier. It's just a little. Yeah, I would say, I would say the best way to to accomplish that is, like Chris said, just to um, uh, cr you could create a script that you can you can deploy to the machines once a month. Uh, and that would that would give you that same. You could say after the reboots, run the script, and it would it would reboot your machines. All right, more questions. Come on, I know you guys got some. Let me see. I think I've got. Okay, so I got one here. It says you've mentioned something about unwanted applications. Can you detect those unwanted applications and remove them from a user's desktop? Chris, you want to take that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually with uh, with the uh, the security compliance features built into uh, the system center, or the system center, our system center. Um, you could do daily, weekly, um, hourly uh, um, co uh, configure uh, uh, scans, baseline scans. Um, on your on your desktops and your servers, um, and depending on the configuration settings that you you choose in that specific role, let's say you you don't want uh, uTorrent installed on on any of the machines, you could do a configuration uh, uh, setting that will scan the machine uh, on a specific time, a specific day, um, daily, hourly, depending on how much you want to actually scan the, have the client scan the machine for that specific software. And if it finds it, you can do one of two things. You can either mark it as uncompliant. Of course, it's going to be marked as uncompliant. Um, if it's uncompliant at that point, you could have uh, systems that do one of two things. You can either force it to remove that object, or you can just, of course, keep it marked as uncompliant, include it in a report that at one point will be sent to managers, whoever wants to look at those reports, and then they could deal with it. Um, but yes, you can. Um, you can install, and vice versa. If there's an application that has to be on that machine that the user is actually always uninstalling, let's say they don't want to have their antivirus client on their machine, so the user is always disabling or uninstalling that client, you could have it reversed to the point where um, that machine is only compliant if that application is installed and running. Um, so, yeah, both ways. All right, looks like we have another question. Um, is there a full list of changes, enhancements, and known issues for SCCM 2012 R2? They are current, the person is currently at SCCM 2012 SP1 CU2. Uh, Chris, do you know of a good, a good place on Microsoft's site um, for that? Uh, I would say get in touch with us. Uh, if, if you can, we can get you that information. Um, I know there's a list on Microsoft's site. I don't have a way to post back um, on here to, to give you the link, but, but there's definitely a, a link with all the, all the bigger changes. Okay, Chris, do you want to take this and I'll, I'll read the question. Um, what is the best way to upgrade the client from SCCM 2007 to 2012 R2 and set the site code? 
set the site code. So in other words, are you um, um, the best way that I've we've done it in the past, and I've done it with uh, um, with big organizations is you would bring a uh, you have to keep your existing 2007 environment. You would bring up a new 2012 R2 environment side by side, um, and then. Of course, you have both environments running. There's there's a lot more details involved about you know having to make sure your boundaries aren't overlapping, especially if you're using uh, Active Directory heavily for your management points. Um, at this point, of course, once that is complete, once you have the new 2012 environment in place, you will then have you could set um, one or two things. You could uh, the best way to do is create a, a quick job, a quick script. On the uh, on a on an old 2007 box, send that job out to all your clients um, to uninstall and, and 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 reinstall the new client because it is going to be a new client from 2007 2012. So um, that way you're hitting all your old clients um, from your 2007 environment, um, and then that's 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 the best way that I can think of just offhand without without having to have to go into too too much detail. But yes, bring up uh, the existing environment, the new environment, alongside the old environment. Run a job, um, a pa I mean, uh, advertise a package, of course, out to all your 2007 devices, our 2007 clients. That basically runs a, a simple PowerShell script, or or some kind of script that will uninstall the old client, um, with with of course the perimeters pointing to the uh, the new client. Um, that will then once, uh, of course, I mean, there's command lines and stuff you've got to worry about, but it's not as hard as it sound, I'm making it sound, but it's um, it's pretty straightforward. That's one of the ways. There's other ways you could do it, but that's the, the way that comes to mind right now. All right. Any more, <coughs> any more questions out there? I know you guys got some. Give you guys a few more minutes of uh, asking some questions. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna try to answer the uh, question about what's new. Well, one of one of the biggest things that's new, of course, for, if that person is out there, with one of the the changes between SP1 CU2 to R2, is of course the biggest change is support for Windows 8.1, and also Server 2012 R2. So for deployment, so that uh, that's one of the biggest things that comes to mind. Um, there's also um, New configuration settings you could change. Um, with R2, you now have the, the capability of setting VPN profiles, setting Wi-Fi profiles, um, configuring uh, folder redirections, company resources like folder redirections and and uh, and th things like that are now involved, included in R2 that have changed. Um, the Windows Intune connector, of course. Um, it was there in, in Service Pack 1, but there's more advanced features within Windows Intune 2 now that you can manage. Um, i trying to think what else, what else off the top of my head. Um, hmm. I mean, there's a lot of hardware. I mean, there's a lot of back, back end stuff that have changed. But um, i trying to think what else might be. Might, might, might be just more cosmetically changed. Uh, okay, certificates. You can handle certificates, um, remote connection profiles, things like that. Um, but off the, off the top of my hand, those are the ones that actually just come out and say, hey, yeah. And then, of course, so Chris, the changes to the yeah. – what's that again? So we've got another two questions. Um, one, how, how well does, <coughs> S, does FTCM 2012 R2 run with Nomad? Um, I'm not sure about that as far as the – I tell you, you're talking about the software deployment, Nomad. Um, 
I'd have to I'd have to do some research. Uh, Chris, have you ever worked with SCCM and Nomad together? No. Let me let me think. I'm just trying to look up what Nomad is. Oh, it's a one eight program. Okay. Um, is Nomad? I'm I'm going to think that Nomad might be that um, that tool that kind of takes advantage of the batch ca batch casting and and kind of steroids it. It's a really if I think of if I think of the tool that it is, it's actually a pretty nice tool, and it's from One E. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I have not. I, I I'll be honest. I don't know if um, Nomad will work with uh, R2. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, because um, it's basically. Um, but um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I I wouldn't know, but I mean Nomad. What when I when I saw. A, Presentation on Nomad back in the days. If you, it was, it's a pretty good tool. Okay, so next question is: At a high level, how might an SCCM 2012 rollout look for a small organization that currently has no device management solution in place? On a high level. At a high level. Yeah. So I, 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 can, I can kind of jump in and take that one too. So a lot of times what we'll do for smaller and even mid-sized organizations is usually with somebody like Chris um, handling the, the, the rollout, uh, about a week-long engagement can kind of get you, and Chris, please feel free to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but a week-long engagement can pretty much get you pretty set up to at least the point where we can – show you how to get, get System Center 2012 R2 set up, uh, get a uh, get maybe an application being deployed, uh, set up OSD with one image, um, that that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's not a to get the initial setup and just get some basic functionality going, um, get some basic asset management going, you know, it's really it's really takes about a week's worth of work. Um, you know, getting SCCM installed, uh, getting the doing the discovery, getting it deployed. Uh, would you agree with that, Chris? Yeah, I think the most the most time consuming piece of for a small company is 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 probably the uh, the image deployment piece is is getting that image to to a point where you're ready to go into production and and, and start deploying that image into a production environment. Um, training, of course, there's a, especially if you've never used the the software, the solution, it might. There, but the best the best way to do it is just jump in with me, and and I'll let you take some of the wheels while we're deploying it. That way, you, you have hands-on experience of of uh, of System Center. Um, at least that's that's the way I, I see it. It's, it's instead of letting me come in and do it 100% and then handing the solution to you. It's always nice to have someone sit with me and I'll show them the ropes. Yeah, I think and I, and I think you know from a high level it's it's just getting getting SECM installed. You you do need SQL um, to put to put the databases on. Uh, but really it's just getting it just installing it and uh, doing the discovery of your of what's out there on your network and then deploying the agents. Also so there's a little bit of time for a little bit of time just for infrastructure readiness to verify that your infrastructure will be able to support, you know, uh, a, a wire, a remote DP, um, storage, of course, network uh, speeds, things like that. But um, that doesn't take too long. All right. Any more questions out there? <coughs> And uh, to answer that question about Nomad, um, from what I'm reading real fast here, it, it looks like it will run with 2012 R2. Um, don't take my word for it. I don't. I haven't used the product personally, but I know some of the guys who actually work with the product. And uh, I mean, previously it, it, it ran great. Um, I, I see why it, the same product wouldn't work with R2 the way it works before. Yeah. So don't take my word for it, but I, I do see that it, it should be supported with 2012 R2. All right. Any more questions? One more minute I'll, I'll give for people to submit. I've got 
about three or four more minutes to actually answer them. So if you've got one, get it in. We'll be happy to happy to get it answered. Okay, let me see if we have any more. Do we have any more in the? Um, there was one question that came through that says, "What type of devices can System Center manage?" Um, uh, I mean, it, it, um, pretty much uh, Linux-based, Unix-based uh, systems that can manage. Um, it's not going to be able to patch anything from the Linux side. You can get inventory and, and, and control. Um, of course, your Windows devices. Um, all the way from uh, Windows 8.1 down to XP. I would say I wouldn't I wouldn't advertise that it could manage XP, being the fact that by next month, well, in two months, three months, you should be off XP. Otherwise, you lose support from Microsoft, unless you want to pay a lot of money. But um, um, I think XP Source Pack two or three is the lowest we go on 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 that device. Um, it can manage with Windows Intune. It can manage your app products, uh, um, your your uh, Android devices, um, um, and and of course, yeah. So that's that's basically some of the devices System Center can manage. All right. Well, that looks like everything. I really appreciate everybody's time today. Um, it's getting ready to shut us down. Uh, Feel free to contact us if there's if there's any other questions we can answer um, available. Uh, thank you very much again, everybody, and look for you guys on the next webcast.